Okay, so now we've seen the basic idea of chemical shift. So that was our second piece of information, the horizontal distance. The third type of information, remember, is the height of the peak. We don't have to spend too much time on this because we're already talking about it a little bit. How many peaks would we get here? See. Now, would the A peak be further to the right or further to the left? The A peak is less. That's on the less substituted carbon. That's different from electronegativity. You just have to have memorized that primaries are furthest to the right and tertiaries are furthest to the left. That's not nearly as big an effect, by the way, as electronegativity. This is a much bigger effect. However, this should, uh, the A should still be further to the right. Now, where exactly would we expect this to be? Between, say, 0 and 2.5, or 2.5 and 5, or 5 and 7.5? Like between 0 and 1. Yeah, these should be pretty close to 1. Maybe, maybe a little bit above 1, but in the 1 region, because there's nothing electronegative around here. Something like this. That's right. Now, there's a complication. It's actually not the height that represents the number of hydrogens. It's the area under the peak. It's actually the area under the peak that represents it. So we can't quite say that this is three times the height as this. What we want to say is this has three times the area. I'm not going to try to draw that. I'm just trying. This is bigger. But the area under here should be three times the area under here. That's why this piece of information is called the integration. This is called the integration because do you remember from calculus that the integral represents the area under a curve? So they call it the integration because it's based on the area under the curve. And then hopefully they'll give you a printout where the calculator has calculated the ratio of the areas. The calculator hopefully will have given you the ratio of the areas here. For example, what's the ratio of these areas? Well, this would represent a 6 and this would represent a 2, right? However, it's possible that the computer might then tell you that the ratio is 3 to 1. The computer might tell you the ratio is 3 to 1 because it's going to reduce to lowest terms. But fortunately, you're generally always going to know the molecular formula. You're going to know the molecular formula, so you'll know ahead of time that there's actually eight hydrogens here. So even if they tell you that the integration is 1 to 3, you can see, well, clearly, it's not really one hydrogen and three hydrogens, because that would only add up to four. You would know that it must be two and six. And sometimes in the printout, they would simply write this as 2H and 6H. So sometimes the computer is smart enough to give you the exact right number of hydrogens, and sometimes it just gives you the ratio. But even if you're just given the ratio, you can figure out the exact number of hydrogens because you will know the total number of hydrogens over here. So that's the information that we're getting from the integration. Okay, so we won't spend too much time on that, but that's the third piece of information. So the first piece of information was the number of peaks. The second piece of information was the chemical shift, the horizontal position. The third piece of information is the integration. The area under the curve tells you how many hydrogens it represents. And now we're ready for the last piece of information, which is splitting.